Sunday of Advent. One last time to think about the second coming before we uh, gather in less than a week to think about the first coming. All right. Oh, where to begin? All right. So, we had a very lovely cookie exchange on Friday, but also then found out the next morning that someone tested positive for COVID. That being said, I am asymptomatic, but to keep everyone safe because the goal right now is to get to Christmas Eve and keep as many people safe as possible. We're masking. Um, the box of masks is over there. If you feel that you would like to mask, feel free during the first song or whatever to go and grab one. Again, asymptomatic, just trying to keep everybody safe because we want to get to the holiday. That being said, also, it was mostly moms that were together, so we are postponing the Christmas pageant. So there will be no Christmas pageant tonight. Please mark your calendars for January 8th. The kids, of course, are greatly disappointed. I dealt with my meltdown last night. So please do keep that on your calendar so we can come and support the kiddos um, on January 8th. And then, obviously, then, no kids Sunday school as well this morning. The adults will meet, but no kids Sunday school this morning. All right, that's most of that fallout. Other things going on this week. Um, finance committee meeting at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. Wednesday is our last Advent gathering. Uh, 6 p.m. is the meal. Uh, the, I will let the council president tell you a little bit more about that when he steps up here. Uh, but blue Christmas service then at 7. Of course, for some folks, this is not the best time of year. So we gather together to support one another, uh, talking uh, and remembering. So 7 p.m., blue Christmas. All right, so next Saturday is the big day. 4 p.m., family Christmas Eve service. 7 p.m. is candlelight with handbells, and 10.30 is um, candlelight with choir and orchestra. Um, just so you are aware, both at 7 and 10.30, 15 minutes before those services, there will be special music. So if you really enjoy and that helps you center for worship and you want to support our musicians, please look at those two services and come a few minutes early to enjoy the music. Sunday, the 25th, Christmas Day, there will not be an in-person worship service. There will not be an in-person worship service. There is a virtual service that um, the congregation has put together um, through the music groups and various people reading. That will premiere at 10 a.m. next Sunday on Facebook and YouTube. If you have questions, let us know. Other things to remind you of, if you are a last minute scrambling shopping person and trying to figure out who, what to give to the person who has it all, a reminder that in the chapel, there's a Christmas tree that has the ELCA Good Gifts um, ornaments. You can take that ornament, go to ELCA Good Gifts and give your money for that. There's um, cows, pigs, uh, books, Bibles, um, vaccinations, um, and all of that, 100% goes to those in need and goes to those items. So um, if you just need that last-minute gift or stocking stuffer, please go visit the chapel, the Christmas tree in there. All right. I'm going to, oh, also this week, but of course, hello weather. All the, all the fun uh, little curveballs coming at us this year. Um, on Thursday, we are hoping to go Christmas caroling. We're watching the weather. There should be a decision, though, by Tuesday about whether we're going or not. So just want to remind you of that as well. All right, let me hand this over to Bob for a second. Good morning. I'm Bob Rockwell. I'm the council president, at least for the next couple of months. Um, maybe afterwards, I don't know for sure. Um, I've been asked to... Uh, provide a little information and a plea of sorts. First of all, as Pastor Diane said, the uh, Advent meal on Wednesday uh, is being served by the church council. And there's the award-winning green beans and ham, I said beans, not eggs, green beans and ham by Ike Ahal. There'll be cornbread, cheesecakes, salads, uh, but the big thing is it's served by the council. Please show up and work us silly, okay? Thank you. It's been a good and challenging year here at Zion. We have shared Christ's love 
grown in faith, and served others in the many ministries that we have chosen to support and maintain. This past year has been an incredible year of rebuilding ministries and relationships. We continue to be that beacon in the valley through our worship, through our ministries of discipleship such as Vacation Bible School, the Day Off program, our youth group, our education ministries like Sunday School, Table Talk, Women's Bible Study, through our social gatherings like the Joy Luncheon, which just held their inaugural event. Zion has been blessed with a building and property that is able to provide a safe place for many groups to meet, meet and share. We want to thank you for your support through your time, talents, and treasures. Without funding and support, our staffing and many of our ministries that empower our people to be disciples would be a lot harder to come to fruition. Our community needs to hear and experience the good news of God's love more than ever. Thank you for your partnership in this holy endeavor. Your gifts make all the difference in our ministry. Finances, as always, are very tight at the end of the year, and we depend greatly on your generosity as we continue to make a difference and live our mission of sharing Christ's love, growing in faith, and serving others. If you are able to do so, please consider an extra gift this year to help make our mission a reality. But most importantly, thank you. Thank you for being a partner in our mission. If you have any questions about our ministries or giving, please talk to a council member or a pastor. We would be more than happy to support you as we work together in this place. Thank you very, very much. All right, one more thing as the band gets ready and then Pastor Matt will do confession and forgiveness. It is Noisy Offering uh, Week and the Noisy Offering will be going to the Frederick Rescue Mission. Again, we're, we're trying to keep things low key and all. What's gonna happen, we're not gonna send kiddos out. Um, at the end of the service when you're leaving, right next to the stewardship um, box is the bucket. So if you would remember on your way out, and I will also try to remind you, to put your, there's, Eddie's got it right there, to put your money for the noisy offering in there. We'd appreciate that. All righty. Uh, time for confession and forgiveness. been here almost two years and I still forget to put my microphone every, on every week. Please rise for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's name forever. Amen. Beloved, now is the time to wake from sleep. Let us confront our sins and confess them to the one who is merciful and just. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your holy reign. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Purify us with your refining fire and set us again on your way of love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ, is going to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us sing our opening song, How Great Thou Art. Good morning, everybody. Let's sing, How Great Thou Art. 
reading from the prophet Isaiah. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The Spirit and the Church cry out, All those who await his appearance pray. The whole creation pleads. Pray to you, O God, who lives with us, sharing our flesh and bone. As Mary awaited and Joseph dreamed, so we wait and dream for you. Bless us and let your face shine upon us, more radiant than these candles and more dear than all else we seek. Restore us when we fail to refuse the evil and choose the good 
and banish all our fears. We pray in the name of Emmanuel, your promised child and our Savior. We'll sing verse 4 of Light, for, uh, Light One Candle. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. you. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and mercy, free us from the sin that hinders our faith, that eagerly we may receive your promises. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the lesson. First reading is from Isaiah, chapter 7, verses 10 through 16. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as Sheol or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals, that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Look, the young woman is with child and shall bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. He shall eat curds and honey by the time he knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good. For before the child knows how to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land before whose two kings you are in dread will be deserted. The word of the Lord. We'll read Psalm 80 responsively. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. Restore us, O God, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means 
God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son. And he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O God. We are going to skip the children's sermon today. Not just because of that, but. And you're going to give me your Welcome to this part of my prayer. I will have a better chair next to me, but when there's a lot of stress, when I'm a little bit tired, we're just going to sit and have these sermon conversations, okay? So, again, I'm sorry for you on the ends, but please just be good with me. All right, please pray with me, because I need your help. Oh, Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Okay. So we are in the fourth Sunday of Advent. This is the last Sunday that you're going to hear from Isaiah as far as preaching. Um, and let me remind you sort of where we're at, because there's something really important that sort of happens before we enter our text. Um, we had been further on in Isaiah 2 last week. We're jumping back to Isaiah 1. And remember in Isaiah 1, we have Syria and the northern kingdom of Israel teaming up together to try and get Judah, the southern kingdom, to join them because they want to go against Assyria. Okay? These are the powers at play that are trying to take over one another. Syria and northern Israel, the two kings there, are vassals of Assyria. That means they owe him some allegiance and some help. They owe Assyria and its king. However, they don't want to do that anymore. Therefore, they're trying to get Judah to team up with them and go against. The king of Judah is Ahaz. Now, for both Israel, northern kingdom, and Judah, southern kingdom, this is not an easy time as kings. Because what they're supposed to remember first and foremost is that God is the supreme ruler. And they owe allegiance first to God more than anyone else. But the problem is they're kings. They are in charge over people. They have to live with what's going on in their day. So there is diplomacy, there is war, there are all these things to consider in addition to who their primary allegiance lies. So it is not easy for the king of Israel or the king of Judah. They've got some tough shoes and things to think about. So King Ahaz of Judah is really worried. And he doesn't know what to do because of these two Allegiances. He is supposed to be a king promoting God and holding to the ways of God and the people of Israel. But at the same time, he's in charge of a nation and people, and there are wars and people trying to get him to join them. And he is threatened. Now, before our reading today, God uses first Isaiah and sends him to Ahab and says, I need you to trust me. The two kings that you're worried about, stop. If you trust me, I will take care of Judah. I will take care of Jerusalem. It will not fall. Remember, Jerusalem is the capital of Judah. I will not let this fall. If you just trust me, trust me. I am your God. Trust me. All right. 
Isaiah is being sent by God to send that, and he gives him all the words to say that. I boiled it down to that. Trust me. We come in with this week's reading. Again, God speaks through Isaiah and says to Ahaz, Okay, you are a human being. How about this? Ask me for a sign. Ask me for a sign to prove that you can trust me, that I will take care of you, that I will do what I say. Because we're a people who like signs, right? If something is clear to us and we know exactly what we're supposed to do, that makes us feel better. I see it. I believe it. Okay, God says, it has asked me for anything, anything, as high as heaven, as low as the place of the dead. Ask me for anything. Ahaz says, I will not put my Lord God to the test. Now, at first glance, this seems holy. This is a command in Deuteronomy. Your ears should be tingling and remember, this is the scripture Jesus quotes to the devil out in the wilderness, Christian brothers and sisters. Do not test the Lord your God. However, friends, Ahaz already knows what he's going to do. And unfortunately, it is not trusting in God. The plan is to team up with Assyria. He has the plan. That is why he is not trusting. He knows what he can do. He knows it's feasible. I.e., he's being a human being like the rest of us, right? Because it's a whole lot easier to come up with our own plan than it is to trust God and God's plan. Right? So, God says, fine. If you aren't going to ask me for a sign, I'm going to give you a sign. I'm going to teach you what trust looks like. Here's an example, Ahaz, of what trust looks like. A woman becomes pregnant with a child, a young woman. And she has this child. And it is not easy. And when she has the child, she then names it Emmanuel. Okay, stop there a second. Of course, we Christians, our ears tingle a little to this. Here's the problem. Think of this not as a Christian. As Christians, we read back into the Bible, but this prophecy, again, it's teaching a story. It's not necessarily talking about Christ yet. Give me a second, I'll come back to that. What this story, this sign that he's trying to use is when a woman has a child, there's a lot of trust involved in a pregnancy. There's a lot of hoping. There's a lot of waiting. The path isn't always easy. Hello, morning sickness. Hello, having to change your clothing. Hello, everything. It is not an easy path. And yet, when she is waiting for the child, she's hopeful and she trusts that something good will come of it. Then she goes into labor. I haven't heard many people tell me that, or my own personal experience, that labor is an easy thing. It hurts. It is painful. Not necessarily fun. And yet, when the baby comes, the last thing that many of us mothers will tell you that we remember once we have our child is that we remember much about the labor. We are just so excited to have this one who has been promised, who we have waited for. And there is a new bond, a new love, a new experience. This sign, God is telling Ahaz, if you trust me, this path to being safe isn't going to be easy. It may be hard, but if you trust in me, what is going to come of this is something beautiful. And wonderful. Just trust me. There will be a new bond, a new experience, if you just think about it this way. Isaiah continues further, and we hear this thing about the child being able to um, eat curds and honey and choose uh, the good versus the evil. The rest of that is reminding him or telling him, by the time a child would be two is when they would do that, in two years' time, these two kings and this that you're worried about isn't going to be. So if you just trust me, 
I will keep you safe. Okay, now, I know we got through all that confusing part. Let me talk about the New Testament then. All right, so as Christians, we read back into the Old Testament. And of course, our spidey sense goes, oh, Jesus. And oh, we heard in Matthew how the New Testament writer used that same similar prophecy to talk about Jesus. And it's a little bit different, friends. However, Jesus himself is a sign, just like the sign, this example, that Isaiah is talking about to Ahab. Jesus is God's new sign of trust, of reminding us that we are loved, that God is with us, his name, Jesus, you heard the thing, because he will save his people from their sins. That is also a name of great meaning. That's what Jesus' name means. It comes off the root that means to save. Jesus is the new sign for us, a sign to trust God. We know that when Jesus comes, and we see and know his story, that he travels a path. In life that is not easy people do not accept him right they don't accept his teachings it is hard and then it gets really hard when he dies and yet the good news of that story is that's not the final word right he dies to overcome sin and death and give us all new life jesus is a sign just like that sign that was given to Ahaz, a sign to us, us Christians, to trust God, that we wait in a time where things are hard. Last night we had a baptism, another sign of God's love and constant reminder to put our trust in God. We're reminded that when we're baptized and when we're claimed, that doesn't mean life is easy from now on. Oh, if only it were, right? especially some of us who have lived this calling out as Christians. Just because we're baptized, just because we do have that sign, doesn't mean everything is simple. And yet it reminds us that God is with us. The journey, the path may be hard. We're still waiting for things to be made right. And yet we're invited to be a part of making things right, of sharing glimpses of the kingdom. That we put our trust in God, who will bring to fruition on the final day all things good and wonderful for us. This is the last Sunday of Advent. We are waiting. We are waiting for Christ to come again and make things right. And we are also waiting to be together and celebrate the story of how that sign came to be among us next week. In these last few days, friends, I invite you to think about trust to think about how trust looks different at this time of year, but also to think about what a gift trust is and is coming to us. I hope those thoughts are um, wonderful and help you look with anticipation to next Saturday. Amen. Please rise as you are able, and we're going to sing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. O oh God, we put our trust in you. We entrust to you, your whole church. Bless leaders that they may share words of your love and your goodness, that we may come to trust in you. O oh God, we trust you and bless you for the gift of creation. Thank you for all that you have given us. Help us to be responsible stewards of it. Help us to share what is here. Give the land rest and healing as is necessary. Oh God, we trust you for your vision of peace and justice rather than our own. We ask you to bring peace in lands where there is conflict. We pray especially for Ukraine, Russia, Israel, and Palestine. We ask you to be with leaders of nations, that they may seek your justice and your peace, especially for those on the margins and those who are oppressed. Oh God, we trust you and we pray for your healing for those in any way, body, mind, or spirit. We especially bring before you Clark, Joel, Francis, Doris, Donna, Dolores, Dinella, Terry, Adrian, Eric, Skippy, all those others on our prayer list, and those we name before you now, on our lips and in our hearts. O 
Oh God, we trust you, and we look forward to your gift of resurrection and new life. We pray for those at this time of year who are remembering loved ones who have died. We especially pray for the families of Mary and Ray. Strengthen them. Help us all to trust in your promise of new life and being reunited once together, together on that last day. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share a sign of peace as you are comfortable, and then you may be seated as we give our offering. As you watch my face, if a wiser one should have had my place, but I offer all I am, 
Stand as you're able. Let us pray. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread and wine and money and make us messengers of your mercy and love. For all in need of your healing and justice, we ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, who was heralded by prophets throughout the ages, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. Jesus is the Word made flesh, and we have beheld his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He took on our struggles. He saw humanity's failures. It is he who fulfilled your will, who accomplished what we never could do for ourselves, who stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering all who call on you. It is he who handed himself over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection to all the world. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we lift this bread and cup before you, knowing that as long as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim our Lord's death and resurrection until he comes again. And we ask you, send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated.
the story of communion is that it is a meal of inclusion. And sometimes the littlest of us remember. So Thomas just said, are we going to go take communion to Daddy and Isaiah? And I'm like, no. And then I'm like, yes, Thomas. Yes, we are. You are right. Please stand if you're able. <clears throat> the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, in this meal you have remembered your mercy, bringing heaven to earth in the body and blood of Christ. As we wait for the day when all your promises will be fulfilled, sustain us and strengthen us by this holy mystery. Guide us toward your promised future, coming to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. A reminder, no children's Sunday school today, and worship on uh, next uh, Wednesday night, if you are able for Blue Christmas possible Christmas caroling on Thursday, and then Saturday, 4, 7, and 10, 30. All right, we sing together our last song. Let's sing, My Hope Is You.
hope is you. My hope is you. Show me your ways. Guide me in truth. Everybody have a great week.